In the shadowy underworld of motorcycle clubs, one name stood out among the rest, Satudara. They entered the biker scene in the 1990s in Holland and soon spread to other European countries, challenging the two biggest biker clubs in the world, Hells Angels and Bandidos. 500 agenten deed de politie invallen. Hierbij zijn drugsmotoren, tienduizenden euro's en een raketwerper in beslag genomen. They quickly stood out for their willingness to use violence and soon became one of the most brutal bike clubs in Europe, laying a trail of death and destruction wherever they went. From their humble beginnings to their explosive rise to infamy, this is the story of a club that became so powerful, so feared, and so violent that entire nations moved to shut them down. Da retten ble hevet av fred, og den 12. mars endte de i verbalt gjengopprør på kanalen som videreførte saken. Ta vare, brødre, vi ses! Ta et mor av de mor av kuller. Join me as we delve into the rise and fall of Satudera, a tale of brotherhood, brutality, and the relentless quest for power. This is the rise and fall of Satudera MC in Europe. This is History with Magnus. But before we begin, please subscribe and put on all notifications so you don't miss my next biker video. Satudara, established in 1990 in Mordrecht in southern Holland, quickly expanded across the Netherlands and establishing chapters nationwide. The founding members were immigrants or children of immigrants from the Moluccas, a former Dutch territory now part of Indonesia. Satudara stands out from many other one percenter clubs due to its inclusive approach to membership. Unlike clubs with strict ethnic criteria, Satudara welcomes individuals from diverse backgrounds. There are many discussions and differences between Europe and USA, for example, if there can be white in the club, and Europe has a relaxed relationship to white. They have not in USA, there are very different. But it's one of the things we are a little unique about. This inclusive approach facilitated rapid growth, allowing Satudera to outnumber their rivals. Ironically, it was the Hells Angels who indirectly sparked the formation of Satudera's first chapter in Denmark. Members of the Vyaribro's hardcore longtime friends and allies of the Hells Angels applied for membership but were denied because they had members of African origin. Some Hells Angels members refused to break this American rule of the club, despite having no personal objection to them. This rejection led these former friends and allies to join Satudera, establishing the first Scandinavian chapter. As a one-percenter club, Satudera has earned a reputation for extreme violence, often surpassing that of other clubs, and quickly asserted their dominance. I februari 2019 knackar MC-gänget Satudara Stockholm på dörren hos en familj i Hellefors. Rätt vad det är så minns jag bara att jag ligger i golvet och ska resa mig upp och det bara rinner blod. Jag minns att jag vinglar och snubblar och ramlar på vägen in och jag hör mina barn skriker och min fru är hysterisk. Och jag hoppar in i bilen. Vid varenda stopp som vi gjorde så fick jag mer stryk. Unfortunately, the three Sardera members had taken the wrong man. Rickard var felaktigt utpekad av en fjärde person som också senare dömdes för medhjälp. Bilfärden fortsätter i timmar. Familjen har larmat polisen. När de ska ta ut pengar från en bankomat omringas bilen av poliser. Gärningsmännen grips. Fearing retribution from the club, the family had to go into hiding. Gängmen fick betala ett högt pris. Nu har han och hans familj tvingats flytta nio gånger av rädsla för hem. Vi har förlorat allt på grund av det här. Att vittna idag kopplat till gängkriminalitet, det är tyvärr att vittna med livet som inte. Så selve eh, Sassudara vokser mere ud af en, det man kunne kalde traditionel gadebande. Satudara began as a street gang before evolving into a motorcycle club, but not all members seem to own a motorcycle. In Norway, for instance, only three members of the Oslo chapter were registered motorcycle owners. As they rapidly grew and expanded, they demonstrated a readiness for brutal violence and murder. Ja, så kom vi kom de was hij al twee dagen zwaar in invloed dat ik niet wist. Dus ik had het geweten dat ik die keuze nooit gemaakt. En uh, toen kwam die aanlopen zo in zo. En, uh, ja. Dus ja, natuurlijk helemaal geen zijn volgende 9 mm patronen door je lijf. Dan krijg je aan de leven niet lang. 
He then reflects a little bit. Maar ik moet eerlijk zeggen, ik heb die films zien natuurlijk altijd wel eens één keer geraakt en dan gaan ze gelijk leggen en dan blijven ze voor dood. Maar dat viel me vies tegen, dat was niet het geval. Er ging nog best wel een paar minuten overheen. En dan let ik en dan figuurlijk wat die officier zei van, uh, nou meneer Meert, als ik u zie, dan uh, lopen de rillingen over het lijf. Je bent een gevaar van de maatschappij, een gevaar van deze samenleving. Jij hebt wat op uw leeftijd gedaan hè? En met de wetenschap en de manier hoe je het allemaal uitgevoerd hebt, dat doet mij de rilling over het lijf veroorzaken. The first major violent incident between Hells Angels and Saturdera happened at a bar in Denmark in 2014, where members from both clubs were present. There, a Hells Angel prospect condescendingly called Saturdera just a simple street gang. Ja, men jeg tror det er nogle prøvemedlemmer der spiller op og provokerer hinanden. De er ligesom i hver sin ende af det der festområde der, og så er der nogen der absolut skal hen i den ende hvor sætter der er. Så jeg tror faktisk det er nogen fra hovedet der starter det lidt. A massive brawl broke out, and the civilians present had to run for cover, while guns were fired and knives wielded in all directions. It then continued in a nearby park, followed by a parking lot before the police came and arrested them. One of the Satodara and two Hells Angels members were injured, 28 people were arrested, and the war between the two now exploded with many violent attacks several places in Europe. The new rivier kämpfe from Hells Angels, Bandidos and Satodara werden immer brutaler. Am Sonntag feuerten Unbekannte mehr als zwölf Schüsse auf einen Duisburger Hells Angel ab. Vier Tage zuvor wurde in Düsseldorf ein Saturdara-Mitglied niedergestochen. Bandidos were considered friends and allies of Saturdara. The logic behind it being, my enemy's enemy is my friend. A month after the fight in Denmark occurred, it was reported that the club held a meeting with Hell's Angels. Also present were members of the Bandidos, and a shaky truce was agreed upon. With a much wider recruitment pool, Saturdera were able to recruit much more members than both HA and Bandidos and started to rival them in numbers. What is very important is that you see is that Saturdera is not only known in Nederland, but over the whole world. I call Duitsland, I call Denemark, I call Spain, I call Indonesia. We go to Frankrijk, we go to Japan, we go to Thailand. Satodara now took over many of Hell's Angels' businesses, including drugs, weapons, extortion, and prostitution. But Satodara's aggressive expansion soon brought tensions with their ally bandidos, and a meeting between them was arranged in Germany. But Satodara was set on not to bend for any other clubs, even if it was their allies, creating a heated argument among the two clubs. Bij deze, ik wil die zaken alle leuten van Bandidos, die maken eigen oven, oké? Okay? Satodara expanded their drug business and soon attracted attention from law enforcement. Nou, no, men er i krig med hinanden, så er fokus fra politi og myndighederne generelt jo skærlet endnu mere end det var i forvejen. De har selv været med til at grave deres egen grav øh, ved at være så synlige og så åbenlyse i deres øh, voldelige handlinger og deres kriminalitet. Satodara soon became one of the biggest drug smugglers in Northern Europe, bringing in quantities rarely seen before by a biker club. The whole Lenska Hensinget Satudara ville utmana Hells Angels i södra Sverige. Och det här handlar ju om ett kokainmål. Precis, och beslaget är ett av de största som har gjorts i Sverige. Det handlar om nästan 38 kilo kokain. Enorma mängder, ja. och rent var det också, hög ja. enhetsgrad. Och ja, värdet beräknas vara 40 miljoner kronor. But as they continued to spread out over Europe, becoming one of the most dominant one-percenter clubs, 
They also started to attract a lot of attention. Informe del Ministerio del Interior alerta sobre la implantación de bandas criminales de moteros en nuestro país. La información que manejan los cuerpos policiales apuntan directamente a Satudara MC. Su implantación como banda ha sido acompañada del establecimiento de negocios ilícitos en diferentes sectores que permiten camuflar los beneficios con las actividades ilícitas cometidas en su país de origen. But not only did they take over some of the businesses of the Angels, but Satadera started to accept former Angels members that were left in bad standing into the club, among them Sven's fine host. But also Ole Bonnesem, who left the Angels in 2013 on good terms, would soon be instrumental in recruiting former Angels members to his new club. While a member of the club Black Sheep, who were prospecting to join the Hells Angels, Ole Bonnison was convicted of taking part in the 1985 murder of the president of a rival club, Bullshit MC. Check out my video for more on that. At the time of making this video, he is trying to get the conviction overturned in the courts in Denmark. The Angels and Satadera now meet and agree not to escalate the war further. A truce that lasted only a few weeks before another attack occurred, followed by several brutal incidences. Satadera's ambitious, aggressive expansion, but also their brutal methods soon captured the authorities' attention, and with the Great Nordic Biker War freshly in their minds, the police started to focus much more attention on them, and not on the Angels and Bandidos, who both had kept a relative low profile after the war. While visiting their German brothers, the Dutch and the German Satadera members planned to smuggle automatic weapons into Germany, something that would have dire consequences for two of the involved later. Both are presidents of their chapters and supposed to be brothers for life, and Ali, when arrested, kept his silence for six months. But when he realized he was looking at 20 years in prison, he decided to flip and become a government witness against his former biker brothers. However, his former brother was not impressed by this explanation and decision. To add to injury, it's also revealed in court that one of the members had been an undercover policeman. The Christian, yeah, that was an undercover. But the undercover, yeah, yeah, that, 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 in the verklaring had he said from the beginning that he undercover was. Nevertheless, the Dutch and German members were not the only one that became enemies after an encounter with law enforcement. In a trial that was recorded in Norway, the Oslo chapter disintegrated after being convicted in court. Den tidigare presidenten i Satudara MCs Oslo-avdelning sitter på tilltalebenken om att svara på beskyldningar om våld, trusler och bortföring. Da retten blev hävad fredag den 12 mars ändrar i verbalt gängupprör på kanalen som vidareförde saken. Ta vare bröder, vi ses. Ta och mora. Det är mora knuller. Mora. Ta och mora, det är han som banner. Ta och mora, det är the argument led to the ousting of the chapter's president and the conflict created internal rifts that later would lead to their further fragmentation. But now Satudera's reputation in the world as one of the most brutal MC clubs in the world had caught law enforcement's attention all over the world. The Australian police strike force Raptor, a task force who were established to disrupt the activities of outlaw motorcycle clubs, identified Satodara attempting to find a foothold in Australia and decided to stop them. When trying to establish a presence in Australia in 2016, the police reacted quickly and arrested four senior members of the Satodara Sydney chapter on charges, including assault, possessing and supplying drugs, weapons, and consorting. Included in the arrests was the Satodara Sydney chapter president. 
In 2015, the German government launched a decisive crackdown on Satudara. Thomas de Maizière, the German interior minister at the time, issued a ban against the motorcycle club, signaling a firm stance against organized crime. Subsequently, German police conducted extensive raids on properties linked to Satudara. These operations aimed to dismantle the club's network and curb its involvement in criminal activities such as drug trafficking and violence. The ban in Germany resonated with similar actions taken by other European nations concerned about Satudera's activities. In 2018, the club faced a major legal setback when Dutch authorities officially outlawed it. A Dutch court determined that Satudera's operations posed a significant threat to public order. The Supreme Court of the Netherlands upheld this ruling, extending the ban to include local chapters and affiliated support clubs associated with Satodera. Consequently, the club's activities were immediately halted within the country. The nationwide ban, enforced through widespread raids, dealt a significant blow to Satodera's operations within Germany and their home country, the Netherlands, where they had a substantial presence. In Sweden and Denmark, Authorities have aggressively targeted Cetudera's activities, subjecting them to intense law enforcement scrutiny. In Norway, three out of four chapters dissolved themselves, and the Oslo chapter delivered a handwritten note to the police as proof of their disbandment. However, Norwegian authorities were skeptical. After several rounds in the justice system, Cetudera was officially banned by the court in 2024. As a result of the crackdown, several Satodera chapters disbanded or morphed into a new club called Comanche MC. This transition led to conflicts with their former club Satodera, often igniting violent struggles for power and territory. In an interview in a Danish newspaper, the Danish Satodera says the following, It is with great sorrow in our hearts that we must announce that SMC Denmark is now a thing of the past. Sometimes things in life just don't go the way you want them to. Not everyone from the former SMC Denmark has chosen to come along, while others were not wanted. However, the support for CMC was so great that SMC is now shut down in Denmark, writes the spokesperson. Despite the legal challenges and the ban in its home country, Satodera continued to exist through its international network and has a strong presence in Asia, especially in Indonesia, where the original founders of the club were from. As we've seen, the rise and fall of Satodera MC is a story marked by rapid expansion, violence, and intense clashes with their rivals and law enforcement across Europe. When man are in krig with each other, is the focus on politics. Og myndighederne generelt jo skærer ordene. De har selv været med til at grave deres egen grav øh, ved at være så synlige og så åbenlyse i deres øh, voldelige handlinger og deres kriminalitet. Remember to subscribe and put on all notifications, so you don't miss my next biker video. And if you like the presentation, please give it a thumbs up too. And I hope to see you in the next one.